Lesson 11 homework. Number one, generate equivalent fractions to get like units, then subtract. One half minus one fifth. So first we need to find a common denominator, and to do that I'm going to list the multiples of two and five until I find one that they have in common. Okay, so I see that they both have 10 as a multiple. So I'm going to use 10 as our common denominator. Now what I need to do is turn 1 half into tenths. So I'm going to make do 1 half times. So I need to think about what times 2 gets me 10. Well, 2 times 5 is equal to 10. So I'm going to multiply by 5 fifths. And then I'm going to do 1 fifth times 5 times what gets 10? 2. So I'm going to do 2 halves. And when I multiply this out, 1 half times 5 fifths is 1 times 5 is 5, and 2 times 5 is 10. So 5 tenths minus 1 times 2 is 2, and 5 times 2 is 10. So 5 tenths minus 2 tenths is equal to 3 tenths. B, 7 eighths minus 1 third. So again, let's find our common denominator by listing the multiples. So 8 will be 8, 16, 24, 32. I still don't see one, so I'm going to keep going. And we get 24. So now I need to change 7 eighths into 24 ths. And to do that, 7 times 3 is 24, so I'm multiplying by 3 thirds minus 1 third. 3 times 8 is 24. So when I multiply that out, I get 21 24 ths minus 8 24 ths. 21 minus 8 is 13 24 ths. 7 tenths minus 3 fifths. So I'm going to list multiples for 10 and 5. So I'm just going to use 10. And that's great, that's less work, because 7 tenths is already 10. So we can leave 7 tenths alone. So we have ten, 7 tenths minus, what we need to change is the 3 fifths. So to change fifths into tenths, I multiply it by 2. And I'll get 7 tenths minus 3 times 2 is 6, and 5 times 2 is 10. So 7 tenths minus 6 tenths is 1 tenth. And D, 1 and 5 sixths minus 2 thirds. So let's find our common denominator for 6 and 3. Okay, great, we can use 6 here, which means that we can leave 1 and 5 sixths alone, minus, we just need to change 2 thirds into sixths, so 3 times 2 is 6, that'll get, and so we'll have 1 and 5 sixths minus 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 2 is 6, so 1 and 5 sixths minus 4 sixths, that would be 1 and 1 sixth. E. 2 and 1 fourth minus 1 and 1 fifth. So let's find a common denominator for 5 and 4. And we have 20 as our first common multiple. So let's change 2 and 1 fourth. We need to multiply 1 fourth. 4 times 5 is 20. And then we need to do 1 and 1 fifth. 5 times 4 is 20. So we're going to do 4 fourths. When we multiply that out, we get 1 times 5 is 5. And 5 times 4 is 20. So 2 and 5 20 ths minus 1 and 1 times 4 is 4. 5 times 4 is 20. 
So 2 and 5 twentieths minus 1 and 4 twentieths. 2 minus 1 is 1. 5 twentieths minus 4 twentieths is 1 twentieth. So 1 and 1 twentieth. F. 5 and 6 sevenths minus 3 and 2 thirds. So let's find our common denominator for 7 and 3. And it's going to be 21. So 5 and 6 sevenths. We need to multiply 7 to make 21st, so we'll multiply it by 3, 3 thirds, minus 3 and 2 thirds. 3 and 2 thirds, we need to multiply that by 7 sevenths to get 21st. So we'll have 5 and 6 times 3 is 18, 21st, minus 3 and 2 times 7 is 14, 21st. So if we subtract the whole numbers, we get 2. And 18 21st minus 14 21st is 4 21st. 4 and 2 and 4 21st. And G. 15 and 7 eighths minus 5 and 3 fourths. Let's find our common denominator. So we can just use 8. So I'm going to leave 15 and 7 eighths alone minus 5 and 3 fourths 4 times 2 so we're going to need to multiply by 2 over 2 to get 8 so 15 and 7 eighths minus 5 and 3 times 2 is 6 4 times 2 is 8 so if we subtract the whole numbers 15 minus 5 is 10 7 eighths minus 6 eighths is 1 eighth so we have 10 and 1 eighth 15 and 5 eighths minus one, 3 and 1 third. See, I don't see one, so I'm going to keep going. And 24. So 15 and 5 eighths, we need to change that to 20 fourths. So 8 times 3 gets us 24. And then 3 and 1 third, 3 times 8 gets us 24. So we'll have 15 and 15 20 fourths minus 3 and 8 20 fourths. We subtract the whole numbers, we have 12, and 15 20 fourths minus 8 20 fourths is 7 20 fourths. Number two, Sandy ate one sixth of a candy bar, John ate three fourths of it. How much more of the candy bar did John eat than Sandy? So John ate three fourths. Sandy ate one sixth. We want to know how much more John ate than Sandy. So we're going to do, whenever you see how much more, usually subtracting. So we're going to do three fourths minus one sixth. And we need to find a common denominator for four and six. So I'm going to list the multiples. And we can use 12. So I'm going to make 3 fourths into 12. So 4 times 3 is 12. And 1 sixth into 12. We'd have to 6 times 2 is 12. So that's going to be equal to 9 twelfths minus 2 twelfths, which is equal to 7 twelfths more. Number three, four and a half yards of cloth are needed to make a woman's dress. Two and two sevenths yards of cloth are needed to make a girl's dress. How much more cloth is needed to make a woman's dress than a girl's dress? So we want to know two and two sevenths is for a girl's, 
four and a half is for a woman's. So we need to do four and a half minus two and two sevenths. So let's find a common denominator for two and seven. I don't see one yet, so I'm gonna keep going. And 14. So we'll have four and a half times two times seven gets us 14 minus two and two sevenths times seven times two gets us 14. So we'll have four and one times seven is seven, two times seven is 14, four and seven fourteenths minus two and two times two is four, seven times two is 14. I subtract the whole numbers, I'll get two, and seven fourteenths minus four fourteenths is three fourteenths. So it would be two and three fourteenths yards more. Number four. Bill reads one fifth of a book on Monday. He reads two thirds of the book on Tuesday. If he finishes reading the book on Wednesday, what fraction of the book did he read on Wednesday? So let's see let's draw a picture so we can visualize this one a little bit better so on monday he reads one fifth on tuesday he reads two thirds and then on wednesday he reads the rest but we don't know how much that is and the whole thing is equal to one book so one whole so first what i'm going to do is i'm going to add these two together so I know how much he's read so far. So let's do one fifth plus two thirds. In order to do that, I need to find a common denominator. So a common denominator for five and three. is gonna be 15. So I'll have one fifth times three thirds because that will get us 15, plus 2 thirds times 5 fifths, and 1 fifth times 3 thirds is 3 fifteenths, plus 2 thirds times 5 fifths is 10 fifteenths. So, so far he's read 13 fifteenths, but we want to know what fraction he reads here. So basically, 13 fifteenths plus what is equal to one whole. And if we want to think of one whole in terms of a fraction, that would be 15 fifteenths. So 13 fifteenths plus what gets us 15 fifteenths? That would be two fifteenths. So we read two fifteenths on Wednesday. Number five, tank A has a capacity of nine and five tenths gallons. Six and one-third gallons of the tank's water are poured out. How many gallons of water are left in the tank? So the tricky part here is that they didn't put this in fraction form for us. But if you say the number, remember in module one, we learned how to say decimals and how to express them in different ways. So if you say nine and five-tenths, you basically just set it as a fraction. So we have nine and five-tenths was in a then six and one third are poured out and we want to know how much is left so let's find a common denominator for 10 and 3 still don't see one so i'm going to keep going nope 27 30. All right. So 30 is our common denominator. So I need to make these have a denominator of 30. So 9 and 5 tenths times 10 times 3 gets us 30. So we're going to do 3 thirds minus 6 and 1 third. 3 times 10 would get us 30. So we have 9 and 5 times 3 is 15 thirtieths minus 
6 and 1 times 10 is 10 thirtieths. 9 minus 6 is 3. 15 thirtieths minus 10 thirtieths is 5 thirtieths. We have 3 and 5 thirtieths. If we were to reduce that, we would get, so think about what we can divide both 5 and 30 by. We can divide them both by 5. So I would get 1 and 30 divided by 5 is 6, so it's equal to 3 and 1 sixth 